So what is confidential computing? Um, and I'm not going to give a very basic introduction, talk about the basic concepts, and well, talk about how we got where we are, um, and share some thoughts about the way forward. And along the way, I'll introduce you to today's program, so I hope this will also be interesting for the more experienced audience. So let's start with the problem. Um, if you're running a workload on third-party infrastructure, like the cloud, for, for example, then you need to consider threats like malicious admins, malicious data center employees, or hackers controlling the infrastructure, or maybe even um, foreign governments, or even well, code tenants that accidentally or maliciously get access to your data. And that's a concern, of course, um, for some workloads, not for all. But that's the reason why things like the private cloud exists or on-prem on de deployments are still very popular. And confidential computing addresses this by keeping your workload encrypted and isolated from the infrastructure, essentially shielding it from the infrastructure, and making everything verifiable so that you know that your workload is secure and that precisely your workload is running. And then you can set up a secure connection and upload your data, download your data, and you know, OK, everything is private. That's the ideal case, and this is what confidential computing can achieve. And well, this may sound like magic, but it's actually not. And let's talk about, let's talk about how, this, how this works. So let's consider a typical software hardware stack uh, in the cloud or elsewhere. So on the top, we have our app. And this is running on an operating system, which is running on a hypervisor, which is running on some hardware. And essentially, in all layers of the stack, threats, threats may, may hide or may exist. And now the, the core idea of confidential computing is to have the CPU create what is called a secure enclave around your app so that your app is shielded from the rest of the stack and shielded from the threats that may come from this infrastructure. And Intel pioneered this technology um, with, in, with, with SGX in 2015. And well, it's essentially the CPU creating something for you. And, and this secure environment has three defining properties. The first one is strong isolation. So the CPU really takes care that logically, none of these components can access your code or data. That's great. The second one is what gets most people excited about confidential computing. This is runtime encryption. And runtime encryption means the CPU keeps all of the code and data inside the secure enclave encrypted at runtime in main memory. So now for the first time, we can really have encryption of data during processing at scale. And this wasn't possible before. Before, we only could have encryption in transit or encryption at rest. And now confident computing closes the circle with encryption at runtime. The third property is remote station. And this also is super important. It doesn't sound as fancy as runtime encryption, but still super important. And well, because we have so many talks about the station today, let me give you a very brief intro to remote attestation. And it basically works like this. So if you start an enclave, the CPU hashes the initial content and the config of the enclave. And then the enclave during runtime can request a certificate for some data that it produced. And the CPU will then sign this hash of the enclave plus the data of the enclave. And the CPU will use a unique private key. The, the final step is the enclave then can hand the certificate over to a remote party, and the remote party can verify the certificate, can verify that this, there's indeed a confidential computing enabled CPU, and that this CPU is running a certain enclave with certain properties and certain code. And then you can, well, set up a secure, secure connection, for example, a TLS connection, just like you would on the web, and share your data securely. That's the magic of remote attestation. And, well, an enclave can run almost arbitrary code at almost native speeds, um, but there's one important limitation. So enclaves cannot access operating system functionality. So you always have to do some 
some porting, some wrapping, if you want to run something inside an enclave. And there are tools out there for that, but porting something large, maybe like a legacy enterprise database, always takes effort and can be difficult. And that's why people came up with a new concept called confidential VMs. And confidential VMs are, from a high-level perspective, very similar to secure enclaves. The defining difference is that confidential VMs include an entire operating system, like a normal VM, a normal virtual machine. And this gives greater compatibility, and essentially you can run everything inside a confidential VM that you, that you can run a normal VM, even this legacy enterprise database. And this tech was pioneered by AMD with their SEV technology, and this is available in recent AMD server CPUs. Intel has now something similar called TDX, and ARM also has corresponding features in their recent V9 server CPU architecture called CCA or Realms. So this tech is really coming, becoming the standard, um, or seems to become the standard. And today we have two talks about TDX from Intel. So we begun to have an introduction to Intel TDX, which is brand new in the latest Intel chips. And then we're going to have a talk about attestation within TDX. And now what is missing, especially like everyone is talking about AI these days, right? Um, so if you want to do something with AI, you certainly need some accelerators in most cases. And so it's, it's great that NVIDIA announced and actually shipped, shipped um, confidential accelerators last year. And now we can have, we can really go full circle. We can have confidential VMs that connect securely to confidential accelerators, which then can run our AI algorithms, train them, um, and keep everything secure and always encrypted. And just after the session, we'll have a talk from Mark from NVIDIA about attestation with NVIDIA GPUs. And we also have a talk by Samuel and, and Jeevan Zhao um, about the secure attaching of confidential PCI devices. Okay, so we have this great hardware, and this hardware is readily available in clouds already. So you can get confidential VMs, you can get secure enclaves in Azure, you can even get confidential accelerators there. You can get confidential VMs in the Google Cloud, you can get them in, in, in Oracle, you can get enclaves in IBM, so it's really, really quite, quite ubiquitous already. Um, and AWS, of course the biggest cloud, is a bit of an outlier. They don't have the standard confidential computing hardware. They have something proprietary called Nitro Enclaves. And Nitro Enclaves, they are a mix of a secure enclave and a, virtu and a, and a confidential VM. Um, and they are designed to not protect against the infrastructure mostly, but to protect parts of an application against each other. And there's some debate going on in the community if this actually is confidential computing or not. Um, so talking about clouds, it's not only the hyperscalers. Um, there are also smaller clouds um, building out functionality. And I'm, I'm pleased to share that we are working with Stackit, a leading European cloud, on adding confidential computing features to the OpenStack platform and bringing our, our products to, to this platform. And there'll be a talk by my colleague Moritz and Samuel Kunke from Stackit later about this effort. All right. Let's talk about use cases. Um, there are many, but I think they can be categorized into two or three categories. The first one is pretty straightforward. It is what I have been talking about all the time now. It's um, shielding workloads from the infrastructure, like increasing security through attestation and runtime encryption. Super strong, super important. Um, and actually, the, the, the use case we focus on at Azure Systems. However, another super exciting use case is building privacy-preserving apps. So using remote attestation runtime encryption, we can build applications where the input data is kept secret and only certain parties get access, provably get access to the output data. And this is a super strong, strong property that um, is even super, or is, is most, is, is super interesting in the context of AI, for instance. Related to this use case is multi-party applications. So you can use the tech 
and build applications where, where, where maybe untrusting parties can securely pool and share data without revealing data to each other. And this is, again, super interesting in the context of AI and also healthcare, finance, and so forth. And we have four talks about use cases later today. So we have one about multi-party computation from, from Keys. Um, we have one from Chris about um, the use of complex computing in blockchain, where they're building a privacy-preserving cryptocurrency. And we have two talks uh, in the context of healthcare and, 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 and medicine. OK, what is the big vision? So if you ask me, and if you ask anyone, I, I believe most, most people will say, it's the end-to-end -end confidential cloud. Everything will be always encrypted. Everything will be verifiable. I think that is a very strong vision, something that you really should, wor should work towards. And I'm super excited to, to, to share that we will have a panel later today where I'll be discussing about this vision and other important topics with Greg Lavender, CTO of Intel, Mark Rosinovich, CTO of Azure, Mark Papermaster, CTO of AMD, and Ian Buck, VP at NVIDIA. And we also have a dedicated talk by, by Raghu um, on the path towards the confidential cloud. So how do we get there? And from my perspective, we need to take a couple of steps to get to the confidential cloud. First step is pretty simple. We can use confidential computing to protect keys. Super simple. The next step, level two, is protecting individual containers. Super useful, but still requires to reason about the overall attack surface if we don't protect everything. And there's quite some buzz going on in the community right now, and we have three talks about confidential containers later today. Um, level three is protecting entire deployments as a whole. And this is what we focus on at Edge Systems, and we have a talk on that by my colleague Mar Malte and, and Moritz later today. And the final step is connecting level three to level four, which is confidential managed services, like IO databases. And once we have that, we have everything, then we have the end-to-end -end confidential cloud. OK, now a question I get often. Can we just put everything into confidential VMs and be done? And the answer is no, we can't. We really need to worry about attestation, and we need to consider attestation. And without attestation, everything, well, sort of becomes a security theater. And here are the three things we really need to keep in mind. First one is we need proper attestation for all software that runs inside a confidential VM or a secure enclave. And we have three talks in this area later today. Second one is we need coherent service-to-service -service attestation, ideally based on policies and across clouds. And we have three more talks about this later. And finally, we need to have meaningful service to user attestation, because in the end, all services work for some user. And we need to have ways to signal trust and signal confidential computing properties to users, just like we do, for example, in the, in the web with web certificates. And I'm really glad that we have a talk about this by, by Conrad from Google. Um, you should check that out. OK, what about adoption? So how far away are we, or how, how far along are we um, regarding adoption? And I think it's, well, frankly, adoption is still, it's, it's still in its early days. Large-scale confidential deployments in production are still rare. And I'm super excited that we have Greg Lavender, Intel CTO, give a keynote today at 10 a.m. PT or 6 p.m. CET about precisely this topic, about how we can, we as a community, as an industry, take competition computing from niche to mainstream. So you definitely should check that out. Super amazing presentation. And we also have a talk by Mark Novak, where we will talk about the past towards broader adoption. And Mark will, will focus on things like regulation. OK, now a super quick update from Azure Systems. Last year, at this point, I presented, or I announced the availability of Constellation. And I'm pleased to share that we, in September last year, made Constellation open source. Constellation is the first level three, level three solution 
an end-to-end, always encrypted Kubernetes that scales up and down and behaves like normal Kubernetes. And super easy, easy to set up. If you want to learn more, if you want to try it out, it's open source. Just go to c11n.sh, which is short for constellation. And yeah, just get started. You will find documentations, demos, everything. And with that, I'd like to wish you a great OC3. Thank you all for attending. Have fun.